Morning Marshfields, Mrs C here. Um, we're going to make something today that's been requested by one of our Year 11s. It's a product that seems to be a winner in most households, whether it's for a snack or whether it's for a party or whether it's to have for your meal with some veg, etc. It's a sausage roll. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is sort out the pastry. Now, if you don't fancy making your own pastry, you can buy a sheet or a block of flaky or short crust pastry from the shops that you can use to make your sausage rolls. But I thought it'd be a good idea to make some short crust pastry as it's quite easy. You only need three, well, three ingredients and some cold water to make it and it really is a good thing to make to get some science in there as well. So we'll have a little chat about that as we go along. So the first thing that I've got in my bowl is 150 grams or six ounces of flour, plain flour or, sh or self-raising flour. It doesn't really matter. And again, each household perhaps has their own flour that they tend to use. I know that my mum has always made her pastry using self-raising flour, but me, I tend to use what I've got in. Okay, but mum's pastry is mwah, delicious. So wh whatever you've got, plain or self-raising flour. Into that, we're also going to have 50 grams of butter or margarine and if you've got it 25 grams of white fat okay so whatever the amount of pastry short crust pastry we're making it is always half the amount of fat to flour so it really brings in your maths work your ratios so if we've got six ounces of flour or 150 grams of flour we're going to have in total three ounces of fat or 75 grams of fat always half the amount of fat to the flour that you're using. So you can scale up or scale down to make as much or as little pastry as you want, so long as you know that it's always half the amount. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cover the flour uh, over, put the, cover the flour, put the flour over the fat because that way it makes it less sticky. Now it's not that hot today so it's much much better as well to make pastry when it's a little bit cooler because the science of fat we know is when it gets hot it it melts. That's right. So we want to keep everything as cold as possible and we're going to use our fingertips to rub in. That's the process. We're rubbing the fat into the flour as lightly as we can. Now we need to get right down to the bottom of the bowl and we're picking up the flour with the fat, not just the fat on its own, otherwise we will end up with a very sticky mess. All right, we want it nice and light, just using those fingertips. Now, if we use the palms of your hands, and I know you're all shouting at me at home going, yes, miss, I know, the palms are the hot part of your hands and it will make the pastry all sticky. We know to use our fingertips. Well, you would be right. And I would be saying very well done. So fingertips, nice and light, until we've got what looks like breadcrumbs in the bowl. And the way that we can tell if it's all rubbed in is in a minute, if we shake the bowl a little bit, any fat that hasn't been rubbed in will come to the top of the surface because that is the lightest ingredient. Okay, so nice and light, little finger to pointy finger. Okay, rubbing it in, lifting as we go and there, we have our breadcrumbs. Okay, so we've rubbed our fat into the flour. I choose to use butter and the white fat. The butter gives it the flavour and the colour, but the white fat 
adds that lovely melt in the mouth texture so that's why I've used um, a bit of each however if you've only got butter that's fine I wouldn't suggest just using the white fat on its own it would give a great texture but it'd be really really hard to handle and you wouldn't get much color on there so either all butter or margarine or a bit of each like I've said all right until it looks like breadcrumbs okay so to those bread breadcrumbs I'm going to use two tablespoons of cold water very important it's cold remember we're trying to keep everything in that bowl cold so that the fat doesn't melt so two big spoons your tablespoons and with a knife we're going to stir that in until we get a ball of pastry okay don't be tempted to add more water this requires a little bit of effort it won't come together like I say we're not just tickling it we don't want to tickle the mixture we want to stir it we've got to stir it with purpose so that we get all of that dry flour touching that water that you've used okay now if it needs a little bit more water add it a drip by drip don't go heavy-handed otherwise you will end up with a very soppy mixture that you'll then want to add more flour to and then what we do is it stretches that gluten that important word gluten in the flour and it will make your pastry really hard and we don't want it to be hard we want the gluten in the flour in the wheat to stay short and that's why it's called short crust pastry so we can see we've got big lumps appearing here so I'm going to get my hand in and just gently bring it together into a ball now we're not kneading it remember we're not making bread we're making pastry and we want to handle it as little as possible so just when it's come together stop handling it there okay okay what we're then going to do is on a floured board we're going to roll that pastry out to the size of an a4 sheet of paper okay so we're going to roll and turn roll and turn never turn it over just keep turning it round and if it cracks don't screw it back up again just pinch the sides all right we want to handle it as little as possible if we keep screwing it up because we think we've done it wrong then it's going to be as hard as anything okay so we're just going to roll it and keep turning it round until we've got the size of about an eighth a4 sheet of paper Okay, so I've finished rolling out my pastry. It's in a big rectangle. Sheet of A4 paper fits on there, so I know that I'm roughly the right size. If you haven't got a rolling pin at home, you can use something like a bottle, okay? So don't think, oh, I haven't got the equipment. We can always, what we call, improvise. We can find something in the home that will help us do the job, all right? So... A rolling pin is great but if not I'm sure we've got some bottles knocking around that we could make sure are clean and have a roll out like that but be careful if they're glass otherwise you can buy pastry like this already rolled from the shop if you wanted to do that but I prefer to make my own because like I say a lot we know what's gone in it okay if we've made it from scratch so a rectangle of pastry we're now going to cut roughly in half so those math skills coming in again lengthways okay so we have got two long rectangles of pastry okay now for the filling you can use eight sausages for this or some sausage meat if you've got that in or if you can find it in the shop all right i'm using corn sausages so vegetarian sausages but whichever sausages you want to use you're going to take the skin off by just slicing 
down the middle and then peeling that skin off. Now, if you've got meat sausages, the skin will come off a lot easier and you can kind of just squeeze the sausage out of the opening at the bottom. Vegetarian sausages are a little bit more tricky. Okay, and then we're just going to crumble the sausage meat into a bowl. And you can just use the sausage meat as it is, or you know me, always one for getting a little bit of healthiness in there. And from talking to the person who wanted to know how to make sausage rolls, I know that they are growing courgettes in their garden, but they're not very keen on courgettes. So I suggested that this is a great way to get some veg in your diet by adding some grated vegetables to your sausage meat. And what I'm going to use today is a bit of courgette out of my garden and a little grated carrot. And we're going to put that into the sausage meat mixture and we're gonna give it a good old squeeze, okay? To this, you can add your own herbs, you can add some flavourings in there, you can add some onion, however you want to make your sausage rolls personal to you, or you can just use the plain sausage meat, okay? But make sure you give that a good mix. Okay, so hopefully what you can see now is I've divided the sausage meat mixture in the bowl in half, and I've put one half in a line down one of the thin rectangles and the other half of the sausage meat mixture on the other half. So making it like a sausage shape, okay, rolling the sausage meat until it goes down the centre of the pastry. We're then going to get some beaten egg and we're going to put some of the egg along one side of the pastry and that's going to act as the glue when we roll the sausage rolls up okay like so now this bit is quite tricky you might need a bit of help but it's also very good for your motor skills your fine motor skills and we're going to start with the edge that hasn't got the glue on, the egg on, and we're going to roll it until it folds over itself, like so. Okay, hopefully you can see that. And we do the same with the other half, rolling it into two long sausage rolls. like so okay so now you need to decide what size you want your sausage rolls but whatever size that you want them remember we want them to cook evenly and so you've got to divide them as evenly as you can always start in the middle okay so the middle of the long bit of the sausage roll and cut each bit in half okay you then might want to cut each bit again in half. So we've got four on that side and four on that side. So I've made eight fairly even sausage rolls, but you could cut them again and make little party size ones if you want to, whatever size you wish for you and your family. Okay, so they're on my grease baking tray, or if you've got some baking parchment, put that on your tray, but I've run out. Okay, so I'm just going to glaze these now. Now, you will know that glazing is when we use beaten egg to brush all over our pastry. And what that does is it gives the sausage roll a really lovely shiny coating. And that's because egg is a protein and when a protein cooks it goes hard and you older ones will know that that process is called coagulation 
okay and it's the coagulation or the going hard of the egg that makes our sausage rolls look really lovely and shiny and golden okay so you could leave it at that and we could put those straight into the oven or if you've got some kitchen scissors you might just want to at an angle just snip the sausage roll to give it a nice finish okay or you might with a knife carefully just score some nice neat lines on the sausage roll like so or you could sprinkle some seeds on top whatever you want but what we want it to do is we want it to look really tasty so take your time and make sure that you've got a nice looking sausage roll now they're going to go into a very hot oven about 220 um, gas mark 8 for about 25 minutes okay yours will need probably a little bit more cooking than mine if you've used meat because it's really important that the meat is cooked okay but we want that pastry to be really lovely and golden and crunchy when we bite into it okay so I'll see you when these are done okay so there we have after about 20 minutes some lovely golden sausage rolls now I need to cool these quickly and secretively before Mr Kavanagh smells them or for that matter before Dexter the dog gets a whiff of them Dexter, do you think we should sneak in and pinch a fish sausage roll make sure nobody's looking here we go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi again, Mrs C. I just wanted to ask you a quick question. When I was taking the skin off the sausages, I could have been a lot safer. What should I have done with the sausage when showing you how to take the skin off? Answers to the school email, please, and let me know. Okay, so I just wanted to ask you that quick question. Take care of yourselves, miss you lots, See you soon. Keep those hands clean. Bye for now.